Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. No intro, because we're doing with a serious topic today. We're going to deal with gaming addiction, or the notion of gaming addiction. And there's a thing that's going on recently in the UK Parliament, is where gaming addicts are discussing how they would personally try and combat gaming addiction. And I personally believe there is so much more to this. And when we go through parts of this article from the BBC, of course, it'll be linked in the description down below, just how easily flawed this whole argument is. Now, I'm not saying that games aren't addictive. There are very addictive games out there. But it is a matter, in my eyes, of proper education and also good parenting because <laughs> i think a load of this comes down to really poor parenting on the behalf of some parents but we'll get into all those different facets throughout the course of the video and so well, what i wanted to do to start off with before we go through the article is kind of go through my own personal experiences with gaming uh, i have been a gamer since the 1980s Yes, since I was a, a kid, and I grew up in a single-parent family, and my mother does not like video games, or she doesn't, you know, certainly as a kid, she did not like video games. So it's a matter of how I could be a gamer in the 80s, while still at the same time functioning as a, a normal child, etc., 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 especially with a parent who was kind of like anti-gaming. So... What my my first computer was a, a BBC Model B, a 32K a BBC Model B computer. That was my first computer. And that was deemed uh, kind of like an educational uh, computer. And so as somebody who uh, started to get into video games, my mother, who was not a video game fan, would let me and I could only do it at certain times. Right. First of all, I could not game if my homework wasn't done. Simple as that. If my homework was done, there was a possibility I'd be allowed to game. If the weather was nice outside and it was a weekend, I would not be allowed to game. If the weather was nice outside and it was a weekend, go out and play. Meet up with your friends, socialize, have some fun, play some football, cricket, whatever, go around town, whatever it may be. But if it's a nice day outside, don't waste it by being sat at your computer desk. And I'm talking about when you're a child here. Obviously, when you're an adult, you can make your own decisions. But I'm talking as a child and how my mother as a parent uh, kind of like ran my gaming time. So during the weekdays, so let's just say for argument's sake, it's during a weekday, I come home from school, uh, I do my homework, I have my tea, uh, I change, I get out my school uniform, I get into my civvies, and then I say, hey mum, can I go on the computer please? And she says, yes. What do I then play? Do I play uh, some violent video game at the time or whatever it is? No, no, no. I am allowed to play certain educational games at the time. Now, there was a, a great fun game called Repton in the 1980s. It was called Repton, and I think it was Repton 1, 2, 3, and I think there was a Repton through time, and a very basic kind of game, of course, uh, but you would eat away at, like, the floor, and you would try to maneuver uh, rocks and stuff like that into different positions so that you could progress through the various levels. It was cerebral. You had to think it. It was about planning. It was about logical thinking. So this was a fun game to play because I was a character and I'm trying to get out the level. And so as a child, I'm thinking, oh, this is real good fun. But at the same time, I'm learning. I'm being educated. I'm, I'm learning about rational thinking, logical thinking. So it's educating me as well. Also, another video game that I was allowed to play was called uh, Chess. You may have heard of it. But the twist, I was allowed to play Battle Chess. And Battle Chess is just chess like anything else. But when the, player, when the characters go to take each other, they would fight and there would be a fighting animation. And whoever, whichever piece did the aggressive move would win. And so you'd, you'd, you'd get that. And it was fun because you could get to see how a knight would attack a queen or how a, a queen would attack a pawn, how a king could even be. So you got to see different ways in which different pieces would have combat with different characters. But at the same time, it taught me chess. 
It taught me about trying how to win chess, logical thinking again, planning, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, still giving me elements of fun because I got like combat and oh, this is a bit risky and all that kind of stuff. So I was allowed to play when I was very, very young, these sort of educational games. And because we're a single family, and I'm not doing an oh, woe is me story here. We're very poor. We were very poor, and we lived in a, in a part of the country which wasn't poor, and, and so we kind of got looked down on rather a lot, because there were a lot of rich kids at my school, and they could have anything they wanted, anything that they wanted, and, and we couldn't. My mother couldn't afford it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that she wouldn't want to. I'm sure she would have wanted to, to give us what we ever, you know, whatever we wanted, but within reason, of course, because she was a very responsible parent. But at the same time, you know, we, we couldn't afford master systems. We couldn't afford mega drives. Uh, or anything like this. No. And so my first Mega Drive was a Mega Drive that I earned through working. I got a job. I earned money. And I earned enough money to be able to afford a second-hand Mega Drive. And that's how we used to, to buy our stuff. We would get the local paper. We'd look in the computer section, because it would be classed as computers, and then I would see if there was a Mega Drive, hopefully with a couple of games, for sale for, uh, I think it was roughly around £50 or so, round about that price, £30, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and I'd look and I'd look, and when I found a deal, then I'd buy, I bought the Mega Drive, and I got my first Mega Drive. So it was, I was taught about responsibility as well. I was taught about... Uh, earning my stuff, not having it just given to me. I was taught about responsibility with being at a job as well and what you should do with that money, which, you know, I've kind of touched the gambling element of it in another video. Uh, but then when I purchased it, I was so happy because it was mine. But just because that was now mine, did that give me carte blanche to do whatever I wanted? No. No, it did not. The Mega Drive would be set up in the front room, the family room. And again, I would only be allowed to play it at specific times. I couldn't just walk in, turn on the Mega Drive, and then everything stopped just for me. No. Uh, if there were things that my mother wanted to watch, we'd have those on. <laughs> if it was family time where everyone in the family was back, my siblings and my mother, uh, no. No, this was something that I was allowed to do on my own when I wasn't going to be bothering anybody else. So I had a very responsible, what I think, uh, parenting rules when it came to gaming. And I was happy that I got my time to video game as a child. But at the same time, I still went out and played with my friends. I still did plenty of sports. I did plenty of socializing. I did everything that kids should do. But we hear these stories now about gaming addiction. And we hear about, oh, this child, this nine-year-old was so addicted to Fortnite that she weed herself. She was just sat there in her wee. That's not, that's not a child being addicted to gaming. That's terrible, terrible parenting. Obscenely bad parenting. It doesn't take much just through common sense for a parent to understand how to control their child in terms of video games and playing video games. If you are going to... Put it this way. When a child is a child, you can put any vice in front of them and they will do it to the extreme. You can put a video game console in front of them and let them go at their own devices. They'll play it to the extreme. You put them in a room full of sweets and cookies and candies and whatever. They will eat until they are sick. The vast majority of them. Some will be a little bit more responsible. But for the most part, they will just literally get be the term a kid in a candy store. So if you put a vice in front of a kid and give them carte blanche, carte blanche to do whatever they want, they will do whatever they want. And this is why things like that commonsensically have to be managed. So if you are, if you do have a young child and you have a switch with them, then as a parent, as a responsible parent, the switch should be under your control, uh, potentially under lock and key in a, in a cabinet. And it can come out at certain times. Uh, if they're allowed to game for a couple of hours a day, it comes out, you know, a couple of hours a day. 
if they want to play it in the front room and be social with the rest of the family, which is probably what they should, uh, give them some headphones so they can plug the headphones in so they're not bothering everyone else by the noise of the machine. Just common sensical things like that. And then at night, it gets locked away in the cabinet so there is no temptation for them to put it on. It's not going to interfere with their sleeping pattern. It's not going to interfere with anything like that. And I think one of the best things, looking back at it as a kid, I was like, ah, but I think one of the best things that my mum did when it came to gaming was the outside door rule. When it's a weekend and it's a beautiful day, no, no gaming. (laughs) You're not allowed to game. No, go out, visit friends, socialize, play in the park, whatever it may be. But, and I'm going to put a but in here. Because I spoke to a friend about this uh, earlier, and they brought up a very good point. Because we live in such a snowflake culture nowadays, that if I was to get a Switch for my child, uh, metaphorical, and if I gave it to them, and I said, right, you can can only have it for uh, two hours a day, uh, and then I put it under lock and key, we're suddenly in such a snowflake culture, uh, that could be abuse. Uh, That could be theft. That is the child's switch. There was a a recent uh, story in the United States of America where a girl had her parent arrested for taking her phone away because it was her phone and she called up the police and reported them for theft. I can't say what I want to say, but let's just say if that was my child. Yes. This is the this is the culture that we live in today. This is the pathetic snowflake culture that we have. And it's affecting parents and it's affecting how they think and it's affecting the way which child is are getting away with murder. So if your kid is playing video games throughout the night, why is there a console in their bedroom? Why are they being allowed to do so? Why aren't there parental controls on the machine to lock them out? When pa- ch- children are running up credit card bills, on your credit card, through gaming machines, on FIFA. Because let's just face it, we know, I I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not saying that video games aren't addictive at all, because we know from the um, earnings reports from companies like EA and Activision, all they go on about, all they harp on about, is player uh, interaction with the game. That's all they go on about, player retention, all this. They're desperate to keep people locked onto the game. They're desperate for that. So they can pay money they want to get kids into gambling with loot boxes kids do you think andrew wilson at ea lets his child anywhere near fifa boxes does he does he tell he will probably tell them no no don't no kid no no don't touch that that's really highly addictive stuff for us to try and get kids into gambling but i've done a video about the gambling aspect of it what i'm trying to say is if your kids have access to all of these functions you are a bad parent or or, to give you the benefit of the doubt, you're an uneducated parent. More like an ignorant parent. You're unaware of the real dangers of what is happening here, which is corporations trying to get kids to get into gambling. Corporations trying to get kids into the mentality that they're growing up, that microtransactions and loot boxes and all these kind of things are okay and fine. And making sure that they ask Ask your parents for the credit card. Get that credit card stuck onto the account. Make sure there's a credit card attached to the account. Of course, that's right. They want a credit card attached to the goddamn account. So you just have to press a button. And there's no consequence. Because you can't physically see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just pressed a button. I got stuff. You don't see the financial implications of that. So I think there has to be an education for sure that goes on when it comes to this sort of element of gaming. But I think we live in a a time right now where parents, even 30 years on, 20, 30 years on nearly, from the 1990s, parents aren't completely educated as to what a mature title is, what a, a family title is. They just see video games as everything for kids. They don't understand that they are just as rated as a film. Would you let your 12-year-old go see an 18 film? No. Well, not if you're responsible. And it's the same for video games as well. So there has to be a better education for parents here. 
And we we talk we see here. Uh, I'll just briefly touch on this article. I will link it, even though I'm not really referring to. It. But here we talk about games can encourage skills, empathy for millions of players. They can do things like that, but it's all going to be done in moderation. Is everything's got to be done when you're a child? Everything has to be done in moderation. Everything has to be done in moderation. If you are a responsible parent, you will look at these issues. So this gamble, gaming addiction, because one of the people who gave evidence is talking about how at university, James Good, a fellow self-confessed gaming addict, uh, then told how at his worst he had spent 32 hours gaming without a break when he was at university. You read that just as those two lines, and you think, oh my goodness, that's terrible. He got highly addicted to games. And then you listen to the next paragraph, and you realize it's actually really got nothing to do with gaming at all. I was falling behind. My grades were slipping as a result of playing too many video games. I didn't eat, sleep, or leave my room. I escaped my problems via video games, he said. Escaped my problems. This person had deeper-seated issues the video games was just his way of dealing with it it could be drugs it could be anything else he just turned to video games so it's not the fact that the video games itself was calling game causing gaming addiction it was his problems and his desire to escape from them which made him make these decisions this whole thing is so flimsy so flimsy indeed, and they are desperate to fr try and find scapegoats, when ultimately it's about proper education and it's about responsible parenting. And if you can't deal with that, fine, let's just have another three decades worth of trying to pull the video game industry down for your own faults. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm not on board with this gaming addiction business. I think there are deeper-seated issues at play here. We live in an age of technology, and when we're growing up in an age of technology, parents have to be responsible about how they, uh, how they expose their children to this technology. You can't, I think, stop a kid nowadays, even a young kid, from growing up with interactive TV. Uh, tablets, things of this nature, things which are always going to evolve into a, a next stage. But how you police that, how you responsibly as a parent deal with that, that's up to you. And that's down to you. Because they're children for a reason. They need parenting. They need direction. They need education. And I think a lot of parents need the education themselves as to truly what video games are about and more importantly probably the practices of shitty companies like EA and Activision and what they are actually trying to expose your children to. That would be, I think, more on the cards. So there you go. Uh, take this video however you want it, but I do hope you got something from it. If you did, please do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.